So I built something pretty cool, and it's a Lightning Aware smart plug. Which is nothing more than just an ordinary smart plug that is aware when there's lightning storms out. And the reason this is so important to me is because my house is very prone to lightning damage. Maybe not direct high power surges that come through the wall, but for whatever reason, power seems to get in here, it gets into my network, and it burns out small consumer electronics. This is really awful because I like to think that I'm reasonably high tech, so I have a lot of really nice stuff in my house in terms of electronics, and a lot of it has gotten broken. I have a box that probably has $2,000 worth of broken electronics just due to lightning. So I got to brainstorming on a solution. I thought, what if I can use smart plugs to keep the power onto electronics during the day or when it's nice weather out, but then toggle them off if lightning's in the area? Doing this project was roughly a three-step process. The first step was taking these smart plugs, which are largely produced in China and contain firmware that is only controllable via a smartphone application, and so it links up to some mothership server in China or somewhere else, and I can't control them in my house. I can only do it through the app. So step one is getting a third-party firmware onto these smart plugs called Tasmoda. The second step is I have to write a little bit of Python code to connect to a weather API to determine if there's going to be lightning storms in my area. And the final step is when there is lightning storms, using my new firmware on my smart plugs, I can toggle them off programmatically. And for this video, we'll go through each step individually. So let's start with flashing new firmware on these smart plugs. This is the Sonoff S31, the smart plug that I chose for this project. It's a very simple plug. It has the AC output on the front of the plug. It has the input on the back. It has a power button to toggle the power and then some LED lights at the top right. This particular plug isn't all that different from other plugs that you might find on eBay or Amazon ones that are primarily built in China, but this particular one is special for one reason, and it's its ease of disassemble. The reason we have to disassemble it in the first place is because we're after the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. That's the chip inside here that's going to allow us to install our third-party firmware to control this plug in a much more accessible way. Most vendors build these things so you cannot take them apart. Sawn off on the other hand, not so much. So I'm going to start by taking this plastic cap off here. After taking the plastic cap off, I can proceed to slide out these two white pieces here, which exposes three screws that I have to take out. I use a simple jewelry screwdriver to take those three out, and then I'm good to go. With the screws out, the last step is just to pull this plug out of its casing to expose the internal components. After that, we can set this other piece aside. The thing inside here that we're after is this part up here. This is the ESP8266, and this is the thing that we're going to have to hook into to flash it with our third-party firmware. There's going to be six pads at the top here, and the ones that we're interested in is VCC, TX, RX, and Ground. And those are the ones that we're going to hook up to our thing called a UART. This is what our UART looks like, and this is going to be a, essentially a USB to serial device. This will allow us to hook up the four wires from VCC, RX, TX, and ground from our plug up to this guy. We'll be able to plug this in, and this will give us a serial connection to our smart plug. Now, how you go about hooking up the smart plug and the UART is entirely up to you. I'm a little bit lazy, so I use mini grabber hooks. For a UART, we'll proceed to put black, black to ground, we're going to do red to 3.3 volt. This is very important. Do not hook up to 5 volt or you will fry your, your smart plug. We're going to do green to TX and we'll do blue to RX. And that part is wired up. The simple way in which we're going to hook these up is rather than soldering, we'll use these little mini hooks and just hook it directly to the pin that it needs to go on. And then the final product, once it's all done, looks like this. We have the mini hooks are hooked up to the proper spots, and we have the wires on the UR, they're hooked up as well. Now it's very important to make sure that you hook up the TX from the plug to the RX of the UART, and then the TX of the UART to the RX on the plug. This will make sure that they go in the correct direction. The last step is to download Tasmatizer, open up Tasmatizer, and then take your smart plug, hold the power button in, Take your UART, plug it into your computer, and then keep holding for about four seconds, and then let go. 
After plugging it in, select the proper port from the dropdown and then click Tasmatize. It should erase and then start loading the firmware immediately. If nothing happens, then check your connections because you might not have them in there properly or you might have TX and RX reversed. Give it like 30 seconds or so to finish and then once it does, you can pull the UART out of your computer and then you're all set. At that point, take off all your mini grabber hooks or unsolder your wires and then you can reassemble this. At this point, TAS motor firmware is installed on our smart plug and we can move on to the actual programming. The code that I had to write to make this work ended up being pretty easy, so let's have a look at that now. The API that I chose to use is one from weather.gov. This is an American government provided weather API that gives weather information, I would assume for at least America, possibly for other places. In America, there's several different weather stations, so to find that out, I had to supply my latitude and longitude, which is of course not my actual real location. Or is it? And then plug that into api.weather.gov slash points, and then that gave me the information on what weather station was nearby to my place. I used Python request to make that API call, and what I got back was my grid ID and then the XY coordinates that I had to plug into the next API call. The next call was to api.weather.gov slash grid points. I supplied my station and then the two XY coordinates followed by slash forecast slash hourly to give me an hourly forecast for the next, I think, 7 or 14 days. I then analyzed the request and drilled down to the first forecast for the next hour from now. Now the format for short forecast was a number of things. It might say like sunny or partly cloudy, and then but sometimes it would say showers and thunderstorms. Those are the words that I was most interested in. However, it would be like slight chance of thunderstorms, chance of thunderstorms, high chance, and then thunderstorms likely. And that's the one that through my research I decided that if I wanted to have the best chance of knowing when it was actually lightning out, then it was thunderstorms likely is what I needed to look for. The problem with living in Florida is that it's chance of thunderstorms pretty much for six months nonstop, all the way from say like April to November. The last step is once I determine that a thunderstorm is forecasted, I have to make another call into a URL that's supplied by the Tasmoto firmware on my smart plug. To do this, it's the IP, so in my case 10.0.0.174, followed by slash cm, followed by question mark cmnd equals, and then either power on or power off. So the goal here is if thunderstorms likely is seen in the short forecast, power it off. If it's not, power it on. So we'll just do a quick test, and because thunderstorms is actually forecasted right this second, you can see when I run the script, it will turn off the light. And then once the thunderstorms have cleared, the reverse should be true. It should turn it back on. Wow, that's some thunder, isn't it? And that's it for the video. I had a great time making this project. And not only was it fun to make, it's actually useful to me. This is going to make it so my expensive electronics are not fried when a random lightning strike comes in and just goes through my house. All of the code you saw in this video is supplied below in the description, and if you have any other questions or comments about anything that I did in this video, please go ahead and leave them below in the comments. I have tons more cool projects planned, so thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you on the next project and video. Take care.